Hey ornithologists, today is the big day that we start our official bird tracking project. I am so excited. In this project, we are going to set out to answer the scientific question, because what do all experiments start with? A question! So our question for this experiment project that we're going to be doing is what is the most common bird here in Seattle? And we'll also kind of see by default, what is the least common bird? So make some predictions right now. Talk with your family about what you predict is going to be the most common bird, the bird that we see the most of in our city of Seattle, around our neighborhoods and where we hang out with. And also make some predictions about which will be the least common. I mean, the least common, but still possible. Like, I bet the least, least common would be a penguin. Ha ha ha, unless you're at the zoo. But I mean like least common in the wild birds that we possibly could see here in Seattle. So talk with your family. What do you think is going to be the most common bird that we see over the next few weeks from all of the different choices in your bird tracker? And which one do you think is gonna be the least common? Let me know if you want, email me with your prediction. But before I get started with telling you about the project and how you as an ornithologist are gonna be a very important part of this project to answer this big question. Let's do a little quiz. Let's see how well you've been doing practicing the different birds in your bird tracker. All right, I'm just gonna open it up to a random page. What is this one? Oops, I forgot to cover the word. What's this one? Yep, it's a bald eagle. All right, how about this one? There's the Canada goose. All right, how about, ooh, this one's gonna be trickier. Do you remember this one? The spotted towhee, the one that does the little hop, hop, scratch to find bugs in the leaves. All right, how about this funny looking bird? It's the cute coot with its awesome feet. All right, let's do just one or two more. How about, ooh, how about this blue one? It's the Stellar's J. All right. How about ooh, this one? Black capped chickadee. How'd you do on those random quizzed birds? Pretty well? If they were still pretty tough, you should start this project by just doing a little bit more quizzing with your family for, this, for the birds in your book, just so that you for sure can spot them more easily when you're looking out your window or going for a walk in your neighborhood. So, you ready to hear about how you, as a scientist, as a bird scientist and ornithologist, are going to be an important member of this scientific team for answering the question, what is the most common bird in Seattle? Here we go. This is how you're gonna do it. You are going to go on a walk or go out to your yard or look out your window or go to a, a park nearby with your family, trying to go to one of those places every day. So even if you can't go to the park every day or if you can't go for a walk every day, do you think you could still maybe go out to your yard every day or at least look out your window for a while every day? I think you could. So you're gonna to try to spend a little time every day looking for birds. And if you see a bird, you are going to try to look really closely for what markings you see 
Is it red? Is it blue? Does it have stripes? Does it have spots? Is it small? Is it big? To help you figure out which bird it is. And also, don't forget to use your listening ear to try to remember some of the calls that helps you figure out which bird it is too. Then, when you figure out which bird it is, and it's okay if your family helps you figure it out, but when you have figured it out, get your bird tracker, open it up and find the page of that bird in your bird tracker, like maybe you see a house finch in your yard. You would go to your bird tracker as soon as you can, and you would get a pen or a pencil out and you would make a little tally mark. Do you remember what a tally mark is? It's like a little line and you would make it kind of small so that you leave room for more tally marks if you see more house finches in the future of this project. But if I saw one house finch out in my yard, I would come and get my bird tracker and I would make a little tally mark right on this page underneath where it says number of sightings. Use tally marks. So it tells you right there what to do. So you're going to put a little tally mark. Do you see that? So that's all a tally mark is. It's just one little line. And that line represents that I saw this bird one time. I didn't really. We're pretending for now. But if you did, for real, don't make it up. Scientists never make things up. No one would trust a scientist if they made things up. The scientists would say, I have a discovery. And everyone would say, we don't believe you. You make things up. So make sure you, as a scientist during this project, don't make things up. Try your best to only mark down real birds you see. But if you really see this bird, put a tally mark in that box and then go look for some more because I bet you will see so many different amazing birds in your yard, in your neighborhood, in the parks, once you truly start to keep your eyes and ears open for them. If you keep seeing the same type of bird, keep adding tally marks and hopefully you might remember from your lessons in morning meeting and your math lessons with your teachers that tally marks come in bunches of five. So in, if you just see one, you just do one tally mark. If I saw another house finch, I would put a, another tally mark right next to it. It looks like the number 11 when there's only two tally marks, but it's not the number 11. It's just two lines to represent that I saw two house finches. And then maybe I see another one and I put another line. And maybe I see another one and I put another line. How many lines do we have so far? One, two, three, four. If I see another house finch, that will be number five. And when you're making tally marks, the number five mark is diagonal, is kind of a sideways line to hold them together in a little bunch. Do you remember this? You go sideways, zoop, just like that. That is the number five line. And then if I saw another house finch after that, I would start making a new bunch next to it. I'd leave a little space and I would do a new tally mark over there and keep going if I kept seeing house finches until I got to another group of five and then I would do a diagonal mark. So you're trying to make your tally marks in groups of five. That way later when we're counting how many we saw all together, it'll be easier to count because you'll be able to count by fives, five, 10, 15, 20, and so on. Instead of looking at all of these random lines all over the paper going one, two, three, four, five, six, a little hard to count. So try if you can to make your tally marks in groups of five. If that's really tricky for you, it's okay if you want to figure out your own system, but you can try to make tally marks in groups of five to maybe help you count them up at the very end of the project. So during the whole course of this project, you're going to keep your bird tracker somewhere safe in your house, but also 
so that easy that you could just grab it and take it with you on a walk or bring it with you to the park or maybe put it by a window so that whenever you look out that window, if you see a bird, you can mark it down in your bird tracker. So keep it somewhere handy and don't lose it because we really wanna figure out the answer to this question. And we need you and you and you, all of you watching this video, we need you to help. Because if me by myself, if I just go look for birds, I'll probably see some. But do you think that'll get a very good picture of all of the birds in Seattle? Just me, all by myself? Just Zoe? No, I wouldn't be able to, to look all around Seattle all by myself to really get a, get a good idea of all the different birds we have living here. But what's so cool about you guys being at home right now is that you all live in different parts of Seattle. Some people might live in the Maple Leaf neighborhood. Some people might live in the Ravenna neighborhood. Some people might live in the Ballard neighborhood or the Magnolia neighborhood or all sorts of different neighborhoods. So if we all do this project in our own neighborhoods, looking for the birds that live in our part of Seattle, we'll get a much better answer to our question about which bird is the most common bird in all of Seattle. Because our neighborhoods will kind of come together like puzzle pieces to form a much bigger picture of Seattle and which birds we saw in all of those places. So you are an important part of this project. Wherever you live, it's a different place than the other kids in this project live. So it'll help us give data that's scientific information from the place you live about which birds live there. And that is the project. I am so excited that I think I'm gonna go for a bird walk right now. Do you wanna go too? See if your family can go with you. If you can't go now, that's okay. You can go later or you could get started right this second by finding a big window and looking at it and listening, listening through it. All right, let's go. Hello again, ornithologists. I'm now outside getting ready for my bird walk. And I brought a special science tool with me to help me spot birds closer up, even if they're really far away. Does anyone know what this is called? Yeah, they're called binoculars. And so if you have some binoculars at home, you can bring them outside with you or look through the window with them to try to see birds closer up if you want. You don't have to. If you do want to use binoculars, here's a little tip for how to use them. Firstly, make sure that they're the size to fit your eyes. So a lot of binoculars can kind of adjust side to side. So make sure that yours are, are widened enough to fit where your eyes are going to be. Then the next thing is to figure out how to aim them once you do see a bird. So it's not a very good tool to use just to always have them in front of your eyes looking for birds. Because inside here, I only see a little bit of the world around me. And I might miss a lot of really great birds. So do not just go outside and go, where are the birds? Oh, birds, where are you? You're not gonna find them very well. But if you do see a bird with your naked eye, that's what it's called when you're not wearing anything on it. So if you see a bird with your naked eye, then point with your arm to that bird and say, okay, there's the bird. And what you're gonna try to do with the binoculars is line them up along that same angle as your arm so that they can try to find where that bird is. It might take a while. It might take some practice. So the first few times you try this, you might say, there's the bird. And as you're trying to find it in your binoculars, it might fly away and you might miss it. And that's okay. Cause it takes practice to become a good ornithologist and to use some ornithologist tools. But keep practicing because I bet if you keep practicing, 
one of the times you see a bird coming up, you're gonna say, there's the bird. You're gonna line your binoculars up along that same angle as your arms, so they're pointed in the same direction, and you're gonna kind of move them a little bit, and then you're actually gonna get to see it through the lenses. And if it's kind of blurry at first, binoculars have a little thing at the top to adjust it so that it can be nice and clear. So as you're looking at the bird, move the little, sometimes it's a wheel, a little dial, sometimes it's kind of a, a tippy back and forth one like this one. So you can kind of move it a little bit until you see the image of the bird nice and clear through the lenses. It takes some practice. Have your family try to help you too, but this is entirely optional. You do not need to use binoculars to be a good ornithologist. Also, if you don't have binoculars from the store at your house, you can make your own, kind of. So, you can use toilet paper tubes or a cut open paper towel roll and tape them together and decorate them however you want with stickers or drawings or paint. And then cut, um, cut a little hole punch hole in each side and tie on a string or a ribbon. And then you have your own pair of binoculars. And these binoculars, hello. <laughs> These binoculars don't actually work to make the view you're seeing bigger. They don't have real glass lenses to magnify like other binoculars do, but they're fun for one. And two, they do help your eyes focus in on a bird if you see it. So if you see a bird, you can use these binoculars to look at it. And that helps cut out the distractions of other light and trees and other things that might distract your eye because it makes it a tunnel. So you can really only see that one thing, that one bird you're trying to focus on. And that way your brain can really figure out what colors and markings and body shapes you see to help you identify it. So these are also a great tool if you want to make some of these at home. They don't take very long. This took me about five minutes. So this is an option or this is an option or neither one. Most of the time when I go for bird walks or when I look for birds in my yard, I don't use any binoculars. I just use my naked eyes because I can see pretty darn well with those and especially if you practice telling which bird is which in your bird tracker tracker <laughs> you'll be able to notice them with your naked eye and tell them apart too so you can use binoculars but you don't have to okay I am all ready to go out on my first bird walk or I might just wander around my yard and look for some birds I have some binoculars I might not use them and it's okay if you don't, but I'm gonna take some with me. I also have my bird tracker book and a pen so I can mark down with tally marks any birds I see in that little box. And I'm so excited. I might take a few photos or videos of some of the birds I see so I can share them with you on another day. If you also wanna have your family take some photos or videos to send me, that'd be fun too, but you don't have to. I can't wait to see see which birds we find out in the world and answer our question, what is the most common bird in Seattle? And therefore, what is the least common bird? I wonder which of these we'll see so many of and which ones we'll barely see at all. We won't know until we go and do this experiment. Good luck.